Hi everyone, this is the video for Lab 7 Equilibrium. Here we're going to be modeling equilibrium in a way that is more visual in terms of uh, setting up our equations than anything else. Okay. Now if we go through, what does it mean to be at equilibrium? Equilibrium is a macroscopically static state where looking at the reaction vessel, it doesn't appear like anything is actually happening. But in reality, the forward and the reverse reaction rates are occurring and they are occurring at the same rate. So you have your reactants making products, but you also have products reacting together to go back and make your original reactants. And so you have this interesting situation where both reactions are happening, both the forward and the reverse, but the overall concentrations of each item is going to be constant, not equal, constant. So as we talk about equilibrium, the equilibrium constant, capital K, you know, in kinetics it was lowercase k, for equilibrium it is capital K. Occasionally we'll put an EQ down here, um, as we get to the equilibrium of acids, we'll add an A down here, but it's a capital K. So the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of each product over the concentration of each reactant. These brackets mean molarity, just like last unit. And each concentration is raised to an exponent of the coefficient in the balanced equation. So this is actually really nice for us because in kinetics we had to experimentally determine those exponents. Here these exponents come straight from the balanced equation. And so for example, if we had something like, all right, let me write, there we go. If we have something like 2H2, reacting with two oxygen moles of, uh, or let's just go with O2. Insert. Now technically this is probably not a reversible reaction, but we're just going to go with it for a second. Now in equilibrium, the only states that are included in this equilibrium expression are gaseous and aqueous. Um, we don't include liquids and solids. So here this is going to be happening at a high temperature and you know just to kind of show you what I mean, these are all going to be in the gas state. Even the water is going to be um, water vapor here. Okay. So now as if we were going to write the equilibrium expression for this, we would be able to just plug it in Oops. as H Not sure why it won't let me do that. So let's try that again. Oh, we'll do it that way. So we're going to have our products over our reactants, and it's going to be only things that are aqueous and only things that are gas. And since everything is a gas here, we're going to go ahead and include it all. So our product is H2O. Now in the e balanced equation here, we've got a, a coefficient of 2. So our exponent here is also going to be a 2. Down here, we have our reactant. So we're going to have H2. Because its coefficient is a 2, we're going to be raised to the second power here. And then we also have O2. Now the um, coefficient of oxygen is a 1, so our exponent is also a 1. And so our K for this reaction would just be the concentration of water vapor 
over 2 time, uh, with the reactants down here raised to their exponent. Now again, technically water and sol uh, liquids and solids are not going to be included here, but this works for, for the moment. So remember that concentrations do not change over time. Instead, it's just that the individual molecules that are reacting may form reactants or products, but for the most part, the concentrations are going to be constant. Okay, There's not going to be a change happening here. So in our reaction, or in our experiment here, we're actually going to be using paper. Just like in the last lab, we have A going to B in a reversible reaction here. Now, we can talk about the overall K. K is going to be product over reactant. Coefficients here are 1, so our exponents are 1, so it's just B over A. Now, because we're not dealing with true chemicals at the moment, it's just going to be the numbers of paper that we have. It's not going to be overly complicated. Now, there is this section in your lab that talks about the theoretical values of our equilibrium constant. Now, just like in the last unit, we are evaluating the forward and reverse reactions based off probability. And so, for example, if we look at this part of the lab where we have A going to B or B going to A. Now it says, where'd it go? A goes to B if you roll a 1 to a 3. There's no reaction if it's 4 to 6. So the probability of that forward reaction happening is one, you roll a 1, 2, or a 3 out of 6. So you roll 3 out of 6. A 1, 2, or a 3. 1, 2, 3, that's three things. Dice has six sides, so there's six total. So you could either call it 3 out of 6 or 1 half. Simplified fraction, okay? Now let's go back and look at the reverse reaction here. In the reverse reaction, B is uh, <laughs> going to react if you have a roll of one. Anything else, it doesn't happen. So the reverse reaction, you're going to form an A for, if you roll um, one out of six. For the other five, it, it's just, it's not going to work. So our overall case, so we formed product here and I'm going to use parentheses because I, I, I don't know if it's going to let me do a fraction. Why is it not letting me? Kind of. Yeah, it's just not letting me right now. That's okay. So our K is product over reactant. Okay, so we have uh, the product being formed if we have three out of six occurring. Now, technically, we could talk about the amount of time uh, where you're also going to be making. Um, reactant or the original reactant, the original A here. And so in order to do that we have to talk about how often does this reverse reaction occur. And so we're going to try one more time. Yes. Okay. gracious. There we go. Okay, so we form a product every time we get three out of six. We form the original A every time we roll one of those numbers off the six sides of the dice. So three of six over one six. Our K for this equation really should be about three. 
And so in theory, our k value here is a 3. Now, as you go through the lab and actually try this, you may find that you get, uh, you know, 15 and 5 or right at a 3, or you may end up getting something else. But the idea is this is what, in theory, it should happen. Okay, so let's go through and actually try this. Now, the way that we're setting this up is very similar to the last lab. And what we did in the last lab is we started with all of one piece of paper. So you have all of your A in your experimental pile, and you're going to roll for every single one of these for each step. So if we look at our um, data sheet, we start with 20A and 0B. That's what we've got so far. And so to roll for the first time stamp, stamp we're going to pull up our dice just like the last lab. And the lab is going to have those colored dice again. And so you can go ahead and set up the order on your piece of paper, you know, red, yellow, green, blue, white, whatever colors you have. And as long as you line them up appropriately again, you'll be okay here. But make sure that you're consistent so that you're not um, adjusting your data in some kind of bad way. Okay? Line those up a little bit better. So we want five dice, and at the moment, I only have to worry about A. So here, remember that we said A is only going to react if we roll a one through a three. Now I'm rolling five dice, so I'm rolling for this row right here. The only one to a three I see is right here, so this guy reacts. I put this in my discard pile and pull over a B. Now I'm not going to record this yet. I want to do it for all 20 before we do that. So we're going to roll again. Now for this timestamp where we're rolling for this second row, I have these two that react. So I'm going to pull them over and replace them with B. We're going to roll for the next line. There we go. Um, the only one that reacts is this guy right here. Replace it there. And now we're going to roll for the last line. For this one, one through a three, only this one didn't react, the other four did. So let's pull those over. Oops. Now I've rolled for all 20 pieces of paper. We can actually go ahead and um, look at our timestamp. So let's go ahead and do that. For timestamp one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 A's, and should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 B's, so we're good to go. Still adds up to 20, so we're fine. So let's roll for the next timestamp. So here, we're going to go back to this top row. My dice are already lined up, but you'll have to line them up by color. Um, remember, Our, B, our A's make a B if you roll a 1 through a 3. A B only reacts if you roll a 1. So as we roll here, we have to consider each one. A, this is not a 1 to a 3, so it's not going to react. B, this is not a 1, so it's not going to react. These A's react with a 1 through a 3, so all three of these actually will react here. Oops, pull over. So now we're going to roll for the next line. A reacts with a 1 through a 3, so this guy reacts. Second one is a B. 
it only reacts with a 1, so that's not going to happen. A reacts with a 1 through a 3, that's not going to work. B reacts with a 1, so this actually did react here. I'll replace it. Now we're at that fifth position. A reacts with a 1 to a 3, so that works. It happened, so we'll pull it over. Okay, so now the next line. Don't need to cover it completely. A reacts with 1 to a 3, so that didn't happen. B would react with a 1, that's not going to happen. Um, a reacts with a 1 to a 3, so this A and this A will react. Okay, so last line here. Um, roll again. B only reacts with a 1. A reacts, this is not a 1 to a 3, so nope, nothing happens here. So we've rolled for all 20. Let's go ahead and get our timestamp. So in our data, we're going to count everything up. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 A's. And it's got to be 14 B's. Um, make sure you're counting each time so you know you've got it. But there we go. So let's do our third timestamp. Now you're going to see um, as you do this, the numbers are going to change dramatically in the beginning and then it's going to slow down. So A reacts with 1 to 3, so this one reacted. The rest are all B's, so it only reacts if there's a 1 and there isn't. So we're going to roll for the next line. Okay, here, second line. B reacts, oops, nope. B reacts with a 1, nope, nope. A reacts with a 1 to a 3, so both of these A's react. Nope. There we go. And then this B has a 1, so it's going to react. Okay, so the next line. A reacts. This is not a 1, this is not a 1. This doesn't react, and neither does this. So let's roll again. Last line. B doesn't react, doesn't react, doesn't react. This A actually does. So we have a B forming here. And then this B reacts, so it's going to make an A. So now we have only three A's and 17 B's. Now the idea is, I think your paper gives you 10 spots. Sometimes you have to roll more than 10 times, but usually it's about right. You need to roll until you're getting the same concentrations for about three turns, and plus or minus one. I mean, it doesn't have to be crazy. So let's roll again. B only reacts with a one, so this B right here will react. Next line, these four Bs only react if there's a 1 and there isn't, so no. This A actually does react because it's a 1 to a 2, 1 between a 1 and a 3. Okay, so third line, there it goes. B only reacts if it's 1 to a 1. This only reacts 1 to 3, so nothing reacted here. Next line, B reacts with a 1, so this B and this B both react. Looking at the A, this A will react because it's between a 1 and a 3. So now we've rolled for all 20, we can take a timestamp. There are 4 A's and 16 B's. Okay, so let's roll again because we haven't seen the same numbers yet.
Uh, B only reacts if there's a 1. Here's a 1. And this A does not re react because it's a 1, 2. It's not between 1 and a 3. Next line. There it goes. B only reacts if there's a 1. So only this last position did. Third line. Um, B reacts if there's a 1. I don't see any 1. And this is not between a 1 and a 3. So nothing reacted. Last line. Um, this is between a 1 and a 3. And this is between a 1 and a 3. So it reacts. There we go. OK, so our next timestamp is 3 and 17. Now technically this is plus or minus 1 for 3 turns, but we've only done a few, so I'm going to go ahead and do one more and just make sure that I'm at equilibrium. So B reacts if there's a 1. None of these others will react. So next line. B reacts if there's a 1. So right here we'll react. The A right here would react 1 to 3, so it does. It's a 2, so it turns into a B. Third line, B only reacts if there's a 1. This is not a 1 to a 3, so no. And this is not a 1, so nothing reacts there. Now here, B reacts if there's a 1, so both this one and this one react. And so we've got a timestamp. Now see, I'm glad that we went ahead and did a couple more because you can kind of see this is a big jump here. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 13. So let's do another one and see if that was a fluke or how it's looking. Rolling all the way for the top line. Uh, we actually have four reactions, this A, this B, this A, and this A all react. B turns into an A. Don't get fancy with, you know, trying to change the papers or ignoring something. Just do it the way it's supposed to be. Next line, B only reacts 1 to 3, A reacts for 1 to 3, nothing happens. Third line, this B reacts, nothing else does. Last line, uh, nothing, 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 up, oh, B reacts. Kind of like that. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's 7 A's and 13 B's. This looks pretty good. Let's do one more and see how it looks. So top line. It's going to take you a little bit longer because you'll have to line up your dice, but overall it's not bad. Nothing happens. Nothing's between 1 and a 3 or a 1. Second line. Nothing, 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 yes, no. Oops, didn't drag. There we go. Third line. Nothing, 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 nothing. Last line. Yes, no, yes, no, yes. Wait, let me. Yes, that one did drag. Yes. And yes. And so now we're back to like the 3 and 17. So it's really up to um, you if you continued. I bet it would bounce back and forth depending on how you roll. But this looks relatively good. Um, so 
for our purposes, I'm going to end at that just because I want you to see what your graph would look like. Um, I'm going to delete this last point. Well, I'll, I'll do it first. So timestamp. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to you're actually going to manually graph, but I can't do that while I'm talking um, on this computer. And so it's kind of helpful to you know kind of extend this a little bit and see you know exactly what's going on. This one? No. That works. Good enough. So this is concentration versus time. This is our time stamp. Specifically, it's the, the role that we have. Um, over here, we've got the concentration or the pieces of paper. Now, sometimes it's kind of helpful to pull this and make it a little bit bigger. Make sure that your graph occupies as much space as possible, just like we learned in the beginning of the um, semester. I'm going to go ahead and make the max here 20. And there's only one thing there, but it kind of extends a little bit and makes it kind of nice. Now, if we hadn't done this last position, it looks like we did actually reach equilibrium. We had concentrate the reactant come down and then kind of come consistently. Here we had our product start at zero, come up, and then be consistent. The idea is hopefully you can see, now you may have had something like your graph may end up looking like Uh, something like this where it's relatively equilibrium okay it allows us to see that yes paper did react our reactants reacted our products reacted but the relative concentrations are pretty good okay so with that in mind this is what your graph may look like and if we were gonna plug in so a few minutes ago we had our experimental value I mean our theoretical value now we can get our experimental and we know what we're going to do is we're going to take those end numbers. We have 13 product, 7 reactant. Oops, there we go. So we had 13 product and we had 7 reactant. And so this would be 13 over 7, which is um, really this is like 1.8. Um, oh, eight, six. So this doesn't really agree, but to be honest, I'm using a random code as opposed to real dice. And um, a lot of the time you guys might get closer numbers just because it's truly random as opposed to a coding for trying to be random. But this is how the overall reaction works. It's really preparing you for the lab next week where we get into the ice charts and the real concentration values of the overall uh, chemicals, okay? There it is.